all ready. Hello, hello, good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. So um, here we are once again, ready to get started, ready to roll. Um, we are going to be dealing tonight with, well, another topic uh, or well, wrapping up one topic and starting another which means that we're going to be basically wrapping up with the relative uh, reduced classes, reduced relative classes. And we are going to be jumping into um, a creativity test that we have over here. Now, uh, for tonight, I didn't really have uh, the plan of asking you guys any question, but well, life had had new ideas or different ideas from mine. Cause yeah, Lately, I've been feeling great. I've been feeling like, you know, I, I get um enough of sleep and all. But I have, I, I don't know if I, tell, I, have, I have told you this, but I have a class before you. I think I have. And tonight, I I am, I was, and I am still basically falling asleep. So I thought about asking you guys, um you know, about if you guys have ever had an experience where um you know you are ashamed of falling asleep or a situation where you have been drifting off when you're not supposed to cuz for example um with this class it almost never happens but with the previous one as it's like a a basic level it's a beginner level it happens a lot to me that i get you know into that um state of dizziness and Basically, I'm um, this close from falling asleep. It happened last night. It, it was happening earlier, or I mean, it was happening today as well. But yeah, I want you guys to share about that, about a time when you guys have been about falling asleep, have been drifting off. Um, okay, have been drifting off and it was shameful. Basically, that's, you know, what I would like to hear. That time when um you almost fell asleep, but it was a shame for you. So um maybe we can start by hearing from Imelda. Have you ever experienced anything like that, Imelda? When you know you have been falling asleep in these classes, I have seen you doing it. So, but it's not so shameful. Have you ever um had an experience when it's you know hard to stay awake and uh, it has been complicated to you? Actually, yes, I I have a meet with um customer some some time part of, some time ago. Mm -hmm. So and I, I dream some vitamin and I I I I would uh, no sabía. Mm -hmm. I didn't know uh, that that um, um, put me asleep. So uh, I I was from I was from for the customer and then I fell asleep and it was so heavy. <laughs> yeah, that sounds, yeah, it sounds so like. Yeah, it sounds like quite an experience because, yeah, I mean, it's something that happens. You know, we are humans and uh, it happens very often. Um, In my case, I, I have experienced um, sometimes that, well, with these classes mainly, um, while I'm here, as I said, with you guys, it basically has never happened. And as you can see, like right now, I am not falling asleep anymore. I was, I was basically just like this, like, you know, falling, falling, actually completely riffing off like five minutes ago when I was still on the other class. Um, but it's something that happens. And uh, I mean, it's, we have to be responsible. Uh, but the thing that I want to get to is that sometimes that happens during the class or doing something that you're doing, during something that you're doing. But right when you finish, it's like energy comes back to you. Because uh, in my case, when that has happened before, I feel just great, you know, um, after I'm done. Like, I'm okay. I'm I'm here. I'm still here. But yeah. Now, 
Uh, let's see if we can hear maybe from um, someone else who has experienced something like that. How about you, Luis, in your case? Have you ever had an experience where um, you have been falling asleep and you feel ashamed because of that? Hello, Luis. Yes, teacher. Good oh, evening. Evening. <laughs> Excuse me. I I I I saw that you you asked it to another person. Oh no. I, I can't hear. Uh, yes, I I have the the experience the experience here in about the relative clauses. Uh -huh. Relative clauses is is so uh, difficult to me to uh, un understand, but that that so this saying uh, subject in previous uh, course, mm -hmm. but today I I couldn't understand more than the previous one. That is important to me. It is a good experience, but. Uh, I think we we got to use this uh, this uh, this uh, subject in any conversation with another person. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a good experience for me. That okay, great, very great. Uh, now, how about um, all right? So, in the case of uh, maybe who maybe Gabriela um, Cortez have you ever Gabriela been in a situation where you know you are about to fall asleep you're basically drifting off and it's like a you know not an appropriate moment to sleep have you ever faced something like that sorry teacher eh, Oh, wait. Um, so the thing is, have you ever experienced a situation? It's better. Just give it a second. Because I feel like uh, it's supposed that Zoom is having issues right now. Ahorita sacó casi a la mitad de la gente de la clase, así que um, se supone que ahorita hay problemitas con Zoom. A ver, vamos a intentar de nuevo. So have you ever experienced a situation where, um, where you have been falling asleep and... It's not appropriate to fall asleep at that moment. Like, you know, those moments when it's like you cannot necessarily control your body, you are falling asleep, but um, you're not supposed to. Have you ever lived something like that? Something, uh, yeah. Más o menos. So, um, Mm. I try uh, I then don't sleep in during the day take a nap no only that's <laughs> Ok, I, I, creo que no nos estamos entendiendo bien. Lo que les estoy preguntando es si alguna vez han estado en una situación en la que ustedes están quedando dormidos cuando, um, cuando no es apropiado. O sea, digamos, que se estén quedando dormidos en medio de una reunión o quizás, no sé, en medio de um, una explicación importante de algo o algo así. O sea, ese es básicamente el tema. Sí, porque Luis, por ejemplo, se me fue por otro lado también. Entonces, uh, Imelda sí entendió. Imelda sí explicó bastante bien el, el punto de ella, o sea, cuando sí le ha pasado esto. Um, pero, bueno, igual, ahorita eh, solo avisarles que eh, sí es de tener, digamos, un poco de cuidado porque está pasando bastante, supuestamente ahorita casi a la mitad de los, eh, de los, de los profes los ha sacado Um, Zoom de la reunión, así que si eso pasa, pues no se preocupen, ¿verdad? Simplemente traten de reingresar, porque como les digo, de la nada se fue casi más de la mitad de la clase, o sea, se fueron un montón, uh, pero es supuestamente un problema de Zoom en este momento. Pero bueno, entonces, esa es la idea. Let's move on. Let's maybe hear from Lorena. In your case, Lorena, has it, has it ever happened to you 
that you have a situation like that where you are like, you know, drifting off when you're not supposed to, when you're like um, doing something that is important, but, you know, still you cannot control yourself. Rarely. I, I, I just, I, if I feel like that, I always uh, take a coffee or do something that because I, I like a teacher, I, I, I always had the, the, the idea that I have to give the example, no, no, uh -huh. but here, in, in, with you know but with another teacher but that we had that she's just always she was writing I don't know why but she was always writing writing and we was just all, all also watching her I was the first time that I always was in in just with the camera off because I I said to my husband when, when the class finished I I just be there, but I didn't understand anything because she was just writing, 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 and I didn't understand anything. And I, and I, he, yeah, I had, I mean, we had her for two, well, I had her for two courses, and it was also difficult. And I sometimes, I, in the morning, when I was like uh, very nice, I, I said, I'm going to hear again the video into, because right now I'm in, Again, I, I I follow again in that in that because her voice, her not no never she has anything and all those and sometimes in, in the church no because if the if they are like a, all the morning there is a I don't know something that is so long and they talk and talk and, and sometimes I I my, my my head is like I had to get up to 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 go to walk and to do something because what I try to do immediately I feel that that feel feeling I I I stand up and I I do something to maintain me alert. Okay, I was I mean I wanted to do that today when I was falling asleep just like ten minutes ago. I wanted to do it, but um you know it's, I have to be here like I am the one who's teaching, so I had to stay awake. <laughs> And uh, I wanted to wanted to get up and go to the kitchen and just throw some sorry throw some water over my face or something, um. Uh, but I just couldn't. Um. So what I did is like I I I hoped you know like when I switch classes I know that it's gonna you know my my mind is also gonna switch because it happens I don't know why but it happens a lot when I'm teaching courses that um I consider simple that are you know less um complicated. I get a little bit bored and maybe that's why I uh, get into that situation. Uh, but yeah, well, it's tricky, you know, and um, as you said, that's maybe the best thing that we can do, like exercise a little or try to do something to like stay awake, stay alert, because at church, it also happens. It has happened to me a few times at church as well that I am... Um, Ok, aquí saben que les digo, no era mentira mía, están los compañeros escribiendo al grupo que lo sacó eh, Zoom. No sé qué le pasó, creo que a Zoom también le dio, le dio sueño. But well, <laughs> it's things that happen, uh, but still. Um, let's see, how about in the case of people um, like maybe from you, Carla, in your case, have you ever been in a situation when you're falling asleep, but you're not supposed to? Like, for example, if you are um, in a meeting or in an important um, gathering or something like that, and you're falling asleep, but you don't have to, you, you're not supposed to? Hello, Carla. Hi, teacher. Sorry, I don't know why the, the microphone turns on, but can you repeat the, the question or the okay Please. have you ever been in a situation when um you're falling asleep you know you, you're like very tired um yes. but you're not supposed to like what do you do what is your reaction to um to things like those so to that experience ah when i uh, how can i say drift off uh Yes, uh, I don't know. It's like um, I don't know how can I say. Is maybe you are down, 
eh, oh, you feel like you are como cayendo de un edificio o algo así. Uh huh. Like falling. Yeah, yeah. I have been there. Yes. I have experienced that. But what yes, do you, but... what do you do to come back to life? Oh, um, I don't know. Take my phone and see and watch some videos uh, on TikTok, <laughs> or or watch or uh -huh, or try to find any message that I didn't uh, respond. Or I don't know. Uh, uh, turn on and maybe do something. Okay, nice. Okay, so in my case, I think my phone is not a a a solution for something like that. You know, I am I don't I don't know, but my phone doesn't work when I need to like um stay awake or do something to stay awake. It's probably because I also use videos and things like those to um. To fall asleep, that maybe the screen, you know, it's not the best solution. Uh, but yeah, I mean, a solution comes uh when you look for it. So if in your cases, you know, the phone works, it's it's better. But for me, well, you guys already know. I'm not gonna tell you about it. You guys, I have told you before that coffee is is the coffee is not a solution. Like um, I thought of that. I thought of like maybe muting myself for a minute and asking my sister to make me a coffee. But then I thought, like, it's going to be for nothing because, I mean, having a coffee, in my case, it doesn't work. Um, so, yeah, I just decided to go with it and, you know, um, think that in a minute I was going to be uh, better again. But, yeah, well, wrapping up, reduce uh, uh, relative classes. As we were saying yesterday, or as I was saying yesterday, when we have these sort of things, um, when we are simply having a conversation, just using it in a regular conversation, using, well, um, phrases like this in a regular conversation, that's when we're going to have to reduce the relative class because we're simply trying to explain something um, that maybe contains important or relevant information, but there's no need for you to be very specific about uh, mentioning that, mentioning the class, you know, or establishing the relationship between the um the action and the subject so that happens when you want to explain someone um a situation when you want to be very very specific and create as i said yesterday a bridge between the subject and the action itself the action as always we are going to understand it as well the verb and the verb phrase so yeah, in this case, as we read last night, the um, sorry guys, one sec. Okay. Uh, well, it's tricky. The thing is that I don't know if you guys have an an, an update on Zoom or how often you check for updates. But today, earlier today, someone was you know telling on the group that um, there was an update. So I thought, well right before the class, not right before the class, right at around 6.20, I started updating my Zoom. And as I did, you know, that's the reason why I didn't have this problem because it seems like more than half the teachers that were um, on a class right now are having the issue that they cannot log in back into the classes. So it's important, you know, that if you ever um, have an extra minute or two before the classes, try to go and check for updates because if not, that's when, you know, this problem may hit you. Because sometimes those updates are, of course, automatic. But there are times when, you know, it's it's better if you if we um, look for them and, like, update the, the system. But that's just a recommendation. But as I was saying, coming back to the topic, the thing is that um, when you have a regular conversation, you can simply say someone able to think quickly might be a good surgeon. This comes simply as a comment, just as an addition to the conversation that you're having. However, if it's uh like for example, a welcoming trip or a welcoming event to a university, you may or you want to be more specific on um you know the person or the um the activity 
in the link that exists between the two. So you will have to say something like someone who is able to think quickly might be a good surgeon. That means um, that you are basically creating a kind of like a par. Sorry, now it would be a um. Ah, forgot. Oh, like a parenthesis. You know, it's like a parenthesis on the highlight, like on how important it is when you say who is, uh, and then you mention the activity. That means that you're putting that into a very, very important place and turning it into a highlight. So that's what the relative classes are used for, to refer to things that are very, very important. However, when you do not need to provide this sort of explanation, what you do is simply that you take it away from the conversation and you leave the sentences as pure and as regular as possible. Like in the third example that we have here, where I could say a person trained in music might be a good DJ. You know, it's just a comment. It's just something that I think. It's not necessarily um, an explanation about anything. However, if you are, for example, um, trying to recruit a new DJ or looking for someone that um, helps you create like new mixes or new songs, you can say something like a person that is trained in music might be a good DJ because now you're trying to be specific about the, um, the relationship that has to exist between the person and um, the activity itself. So very important to think that uh, or to take that into consideration and to, of course, consider it when you are trying to explain or do a high explanation about something. Now, moving on. You can also drop who um, or that in and change to the verb, um, change the verb to a gerund, something like this. Someone uh, who or that needs job security might not want to be a jazz musician. However, instead of saying who or that, you may say someone needing job security might not want to be a jazz musician. So here, instead of saying who or that, you simply switch the verb into a gerund. So that's what you do in the case of wanting a steal to create a sort of relative class relationship here, but without saying who or that. This basically what does is that um, it replaces that extra level of information that you give um you know this word or this activity when you are explaining um how to use or the activity itself you know the, the thing that you're gonna do so yeah someone needing job security might not want to be a jazz musician so this is once again something that you do when you're explaining but not over explaining and the last one is in many relative classes, who or that has, um, sorry, that has can be replaced by with. So once again, we have something like a person with a good voice could be a good TV journalist. So a person with a good voice could be a good TV journalist. Instead of saying a person who has or a person that has, a good voice because um, this relative class is not going to be um, important when you're simply just, you know, saying it on, I don't know, a regular conversation. It's not like you're looking for a TV journalist. However, if you were in the case looking for a TV journalist, you want to be specific. You want to explain as much as possible that, you know, the person that you get um has to have this sort of thing so yeah um it seems like it's a mess well sorry for the ones who are missing the class because yeah it's it's a, it's a whole mess right now anyhow um so relative classes as i said they are not one of the things that you're going to find all the time. These are not necessarily those sort of topics that you're going to be using in a daily basis. 
these are normally just things that work as like an add-on you know it's more more um more common for people who like do presentations like lots of presentations or for people who do uh, like research maybe for those people uh reduce relative classes or relative classes themselves are going to play a huge role but for those who do not necessarily you know have any play into those um areas of education or areas of um uh, information they're not necessarily going to need you know to um to work properly with relative classes well i don't know do you guys have any questions related to this because as i said it's a topic that um it's not going to be that important it's not uh necessarily going to influence much of your daily conversation but still it's something important to know in the case that you know at one point you turn into i don't know a presenter or um a panelist maybe so any questions that relate to this topic Okay, seems like no then. So we're gonna jump into this creativity test. It's gonna be fun because we're not gonna have, you know, as many people. So we're gonna do this activity right now, which has a lot to do with um how creative we are considered to be. And of course, this is going to be personal. So it's basically going to come from you and your own opinion about yourself. So it's not, you know, that um that you have to score a high grade or a high score. It's mostly for fun and for you to uh kind of get to know yourself a little bit better. So how creative are you? We have 10 questions. It's not that uh they're not that complicated, either of them. Um, and we're gonna have questions like, are you a risk taker? It means uh, that you know you're the kind of person who likes to i don't know to take risks to do things that are considered dangerous by others or things that not many people will consider do so are you one of those people are you naturally curious you know one of those people who wants to learn more wants to see more wants to experience more apart from what you are told and if it comes like naturally, you know, if it's not like influenced on you or forced by anyone else, because sometimes we are kind of curious, but it's not because we want to. It's maybe because we are influenced because people um want us to to be curious. So that can also happen. Uh, then the third one, do you look for opportunities to improve things? Like, are you one of those people who is always on the on the look for um, you know, the chance to improve something. Like um, if, for example, you see a swing on a, on a tree, hanging on a tree, are you one of those people who will think like, oh, it would be better if it worked like this, if it worked like that, or if uh, I painted it, if I um, switched something in it. So are you one of those people? The next one, are you sensitive to beauty? Like, you know, one of those people who like to take care of yourself, um, your skin or the way you look, your clothes. So are you also one of those? Um, so yeah, sensitive beauty, sensitive to beauty is going to be that, you know, the, the kind of people who um, who is always on the look to, to see what can be um, done better in yourself and also in other people. So sensitive to beauty will relate to that, to... Um, to how aware are you on how you may look and how other people um, can tend to look? Uh, not necessarily. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Um, and number five. Do you, challenge, do you challenge accepted ideas? When we talk about challenge accepted ideas, it's like, you know, things that people already or like the whole public already believes in, the whole public already um, thinks they are like rules. But are you the one who is there to challenge them, that challenge those ideas? Like, for example, let's think about, um, you know, the, 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 the use of the, 
the um the gel, the sanitizer, the hand sanitizer. So were you one of those people who didn't like the idea of wearing sanitizer or um you know using it when you got into public places a few years back? Or did you simply follow the, the flow and uh, um you know did what everybody else was doing? Because that was basically like an accepted idea, you know, because basically we all agreed that it was a nice thing to do, like cleaning your hands and, um, you know, doing like being careful for everyone else. Uh, were you one of those who will like, you know, challenge that? That is probably a, a tricky topic, but maybe um, let's say that... Uh, Another accepted idea could be when you go to the movies and you have to buy the popcorn there. Are you the kind of people who, who don't want to buy popcorn and maybe you try to trick the system? So are you one of those who is trying to trick systems and trying to do things that are not necessarily allowed? And uh, it's not like it's a crime, but it's like you do not simply accept everything as it comes, but you try to do it your own way as well. Well, Number six, do you keep an eye out for new fashions and products? Uh, are you one of those as well that keeps an eye out to new fashions and products? Um, do you adapt easily to new situations? Like you have, you know, that capability of uh, when you simply switch from one place to another. Like, can you adapt easily? Can you, um, for example, start getting along with new people easily? Or are you the kind of people who takes a while to warm up to new situations? Then the next one, do you, um, do you trust your guesses or intuitions or insights? Well, are you one of those who also, you know, has trust on your um, like personal perception of things? Do you consider that you're good at that? At, you know, simply um, having an idea or having an intuition in believing into it and trusting into it and in pushing it just to see if it was uh down to be true are you one of those people the next one are you more interested in the future than in the past well are you one of those who doesn't necessarily you know spend time looking back into the past but rather continue thinking about the future about the things that are to come instead of the things that have already happened and the last one, do you have a creative sense of humor? Like, I, are you one of those people who has um, the capability or like possibility of creating jokes or being, um, whatchamacallit, being good at, at doing jokes or at understanding them even? So, yeah. Well, so creativity test. Those are the questions. Those are basically the explanations that we need to um, to follow. I would like to hear from you guys and see how creative you consider you are. And I will try to take notes uh, here on my phone. I'll try to see, you know, um, what are the grades because it will be great at the end to see how creative you guys turn out to be. So I think we are going to start maybe with um, people who have been here a while. Um, Maybe you, Lorena, because I feel like you're the only one who wasn't thrown out. So, so yeah. Uh, in your case, would you like to start the creativity test? Okay. All right. So, first question. Are you a risk taker? Mm, rarely. All right. So, let me see. Uh, it's... All right. Number two. Are you naturally curious? Mm, rarely. All right. Um, do you look for opportunities to improve things? Sometimes. Okay. Um, how about are you sensitive to beauty? Sometimes. Okay. Um, how about do you challenge accepted ideas? Mm, sometimes so. Okay. Um, oh, wait. How about, uh, do you keep an eye out for new fashions and products? Rarely. Okay. 
Um, how about do you adapt easily to new situations? Mm, always. Okay. Um, how about do you trust your guesses, intuitions, or insight or and insight? Mm, sometimes. Sometimes. And uh, how about are you more interested in the future than in the past? Mm, always. Okay. How about um? Do you have a creative sense of humor? Always. Yeah. All right. Very good. <laughs> so, how many points do you think you got? Like twenty. Yes, exactly. Ya se la memorizó la pregunta, pa. No, I made it before when when it, I was in the platform. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and I was like, uh huh. She already knows the answers. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you got 20 points. You got 20. We're gonna look, we're gonna see, you know, in a minute the results. Uh um, right now we're gonna go and, and maybe hear from someone else. Um, how about we see in the case of uh, Elizabeth? How about you? Let's see. How creative are um, you? Hey there. So, Elizabeth, are you a risk taker? Um, always. <laughs> okay. How about um are you naturally curious? Mm, sometime. Um how about do you look for opportunities to improve things? Mm, always. Yes, I can see to that. How about are you <laughs> sensitive to beauty? Mm, sometime. Already. Um how about um do you challenge accepted ideas? Mm -hmm. Sometime. <laughs> All right. How about um do you keep an eye out for new fashions and products? Mm, rarely. Rarely. Um how about uh do you adapt easily to new situations? Mm, sometimes. Sometimes. And uh, let's see, in the case of uh, do you trust your guests uh, or sorry, guesses, intuitions, and insights? Sometimes. Okay. How about are you more interested in the future than in the past? Always. Okay. And the last one. Do you have a creative sense of humor? Mm, always. <laughs> Already then. Very good. How many points do you think you got? Um, I don't know. <laughs> um. <laughs> well, in your case, you got 23. So we're going to see later what does that mean. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much. Let's see. Let's move on. Already, how about in the case of um, Gabriela Cortez? How about you? Let's see. Let's take your creative test. Okay. Okay. So first one. Um, are you a risk taker? Um, sometimes. Are you naturally curious? Sometimes. Um, do you look for opportunities to improve things? Sometimes. <laughs> okay. Uh, are you sensitive to beauty? Uh, rarely. Already. How about um, do you challenge accepted ideas? <laughs> okay. Um, do you keep an eye out for new fashions and products? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. Um, how about uh do you adapt easily to new situations? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. Um, how about um do you trust your guests, guesses, intuitions, and insights? Sometimes. Sometimes. Um, how about are you um more interested in the future than in the past? Sometimes. Sometimes. And the last one, do you have a creative sense of humor? 
Rarely. Okay. Good. Uh, so in your case, how many points do you think you got? Well, you are already off, so I'll tell you. Uh, in your case, you got 17 points. Now, let's see. How about in the case of you, Luis? Um, do you mind taking the creativity test with us? Excuse me, teacher. Do you mind taking the test? Would you like to take it? Yes. Okay. So let's see. Are you a risk taker, Luis? Sometimes. Already. Um, are you naturally curious? Always. Okay. Um, do you look for opportunities to improve things? Always. Okay. Um, are you sensitive to beauty? Rarely. Okay. Um, do you challenge accepted ideas? Always. Okay, great. I like that. Um, do you keep an eye out for new fashions and products? Sometimes. Okay. Um, do you adapt easily to new situations? Always. Okay. Um, do you trust your guesses, intuitions, and insights? Sometimes. Okay. Um, are you more interested in the future than in the past? Rarely. Okay. And the last one. Do you have a creative sense of humor? Sometimes. Okay. So, um, strangely as it can be, I, I thought you were going to get a higher score. But at the end, um, how much do you think you got? Uh, I don't know. I didn't <laughs> take notes. Okay. So uh, according to my notes, you got 19 points. So yeah, 19 points, but we'll yes, see. We'll thank see. you, good, good score. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what that means in a minute. We'll see what that means in a minute. Now, let's see, uh, someone else. How about um, Leslie, are you here? I think yes, yes. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> okay, would you like to take it? Yeah, of Already course. <laughs> then. So how about, are you a risk taker? Always. Okay, Um, are you naturally curious? Mm, always. Okay. Ah, espérenme. Fíjese que a usted Luis le dice jarana porque ahí solo le sumé dos puntos. Ya después voy a corregir eso. Bueno, do you look for opportunities to improve things? Definitely always. Okay. Um, are you sensitive to beauty? Mm, sometimes. Okay. Um, let's see. Do you challenge accepted ideas? Always. Already, um, do you keep an eye out for new fashions and products? <laughs> Always. <laughs> okay. Um, do you adapt easily to new situations? Always. How about um, let's see. Do you trust your guesses, intuitions, and insights? Yeah, always. Okay. How about, uh, are you more interested in the future than in the past? Always do. And the last one, do you have a creative sense of humor? Sometimes. All right. So um, how much do you think you got? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> well, in your case, it's a 28. So yeah, that's, um, so far I think it has been, yeah, it has been the highest score we got. So great. We'll see what that means in a minute, though. How okay. about um, Carla? Would you like to take the, the creativity test? Yes, teacher. Okay. So, let's get started. Um, are you a risk taker? Um, some time. Okay. Are you naturally curious? Always. Okay. Um... Do you look for opportunities to improve things? Um, sometimes no, rarely. Okay. Um, how about are you sensitive to beauty? Yes. Yes, always, always. Okay. How about uh? 
How about in the case of uh, do you challenge abstracted ideas? Um, rarely. Okay. Um, do you keep an eye out for new fashions and products? Never. <laughs> All right. Um, how about do you adapt easily to new situations? Um, sometimes. Okay. How about um, do you trust your guests' intuitions and insight? Eh, always. Yes. Okay. Ese ojo de loca no se equivoca. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> How about are you more interested in the future than in the past? Yes, the future, the future is the most important than All the past. Right. And how about do you have a creative sense of humor? Always. Always. I'm a funny person. Great. Very good. Nice, nice, nice. How much do you think you got, Carlita? What, teacher? How much do you think you got? Um, about these uh, items. items. Mm -hmm. ¿Cuántos puntos crees que tú? What? I don't know. My my dog is. Uh, oh, okay. Well, make so it. <laughs> it's okay. In your case, uh, you got twenty two points. So yeah, it's a great score. We'll see what that means in a minute. Now, let's see. Uh, I think we still have time for two more people. So we maybe get um Claudia. Would you mind, Claudia? Would you like to take the creativity test? Good evening, teacher. Yes. Evening. Okay. So let's see. Um, are you a risk taker? With fur, always. Okay. Um, are you naturally curious? Always. Already. Um, do you look for opportunities to improve things? Always. Already. Uh, are you sensitive to beauty? Sometimes. Okay. Um, do you challenge accepted ideas? Always. Okay. Um, do you keep an eye out for new fashions and products? Sometimes. Okay. How about, um, do you adapt easily to new situations? Sometimes. Okay. And do you trust your guesses, intuitions, and insights? Sometimes. All right. Uh, how about, um, are you more interested in the future than in the past? Always. And the last one, do you have a creative sense of humor? Always. Okay. So, how much do you think you got? Maybe 27. Ooh, you were close. You got 26. Oh. <laughs> yeah, 26. I was very close. Very, very close. Okay. Um. So, yeah. One more. And I think after that, we're going to see, you know, the details, the reasons behind it. Um, maybe Rosa, would you like to take the creativity test, Rosa? Okay, we're not getting a reply from her right now. How about Melanie? Hi. Hey there. Okay, so Melanie, let's see. Um, are you a risk taker, Melanie? Um, sometimes. Okay. Um, are you naturally curious? Sometimes. Okay. Do you look for opportunities to improve things? Sometimes. How about uh, are you sensitive to beauty? Rarely. Okay. Um, let's see. How about um, do you challenge accepted ideas? Sometimes. Okay. Um, do you keep an eye out for new fashions and products? Probably. Okay. Um, did you adapt easily to new situations? Mm. Sometimes. 
Okay. Um, did you trust your guesses, intuitions, and insight? Sometimes. Um, how about, are you more interested in the future than in the past? Always. Okay. And do you have a creative sense of humor? Rarely. Okay. Very good. So, in your case, um, you got a score of 19 points. Now, let's see what these points mean. Okay. Uh, and let's see. In the case of people who get a score between 21 and 30, it is supposed to mean uh, that, uh, I mean, you got this because you're open minded, you like to keep up with the latest trends and innovations. Accepting the status quo bores you and you see mistakes in, as learning experiences. So basically that's, you know, what it means if you got a score between 21 and 30. And the people who got scores between these uh, range were um, Elizabeth, Luis, Leslie, Carla, and Claudia. How about if you got a score between 11 and 20? Well, if you got a score between 11 and 20, it means that you often have good ideas, but you prefer to feel them out uh, with friends before talk, taking action. You're up to date with new fashions and products, but unlikely to be the first in your group to try them. So uh, the people who we got in between these ranges were um, Lorena, Gabi Cortez, and Melanie. And between zero and 10, you prefer to stick with the trend, uh, sorry, with the tried and true, which helps you feel safe, but you may get left behind in later years. You can test with who you are and with what you know. So basically, uh, you're content. So you're content with who you are and with uh, what you know. Uh, people who got between these lines are only me because I didn't take the test. No, no one uh -huh. basically <laughs> fell in between these lines. So yeah. Now, if you guys give me a chance, I will see if I can, you know, take my own score because I actually haven't taken, haven't recorded it. I mean, I was, uh, of course, thinking on the answers whenever I was asking you. So in the first one, in the case of uh, being a risk taker, I feel like I am uh, normally in my group. I'm the first one trying things. So yeah, I am. I have actually gotten a few stomach aches because of that. Um, <laughs> am I naturally curious? Yes, I do consider that I am. How about, you know, do I look for opportunities to improve things? I do. I get into arguments with my boss because of that. So yes, I do. Uh, am I sensitive to beauty? In my case, I am not sensitive to my beauty, but I'm sensitive to beauty of other people. Uh, but I will say that sometimes. So I will not score that as an always. Do you, do I accept, um, do I challenge, sorry, accepted ideas? I do. I basically always do. So yeah. How about, do you keep an eye out for new fashions and products? I actually do that as well. Um, did you adapt easily to situations? Of course. Uh, do you trust? Yes, I have a huge trust on my um, guesses, intuitions, and insight. And the last one, um, the future thing. So yes, I also feel like, you know, the future is, as someone said, I think it was Carla, uh, it's basically the most important thing, more important than the past. And at the end, uh, the sense of humor, well, you might be, you know, um, the guesses of that. So yeah, let's get <laughs> name. So <laughs> basically. This is trampa. Let's get name. Ser el último, me dicen, como siempre dicen, el que reparte se lleva la mejor parte. No, in my case, I was, I was considering this thing, and yeah, I got um, basically 29 points. The only thing that I do not do is that I'm not, uh, well, that sensitive to beauty, at least not um, to mine. But well, that's, um, it's great, you know, sometimes to like get to know you a little bit better, I know that, or sorry, I remember that when I started um, the university, I was supposed to take a psychological test, which I never did, um, or at least not at the beginning. Then when I was reaching my 
fourth year, I think it was, they were seeing, you know, that it was like, okay, this guy is coming for it. This guy might graduate. Um, so they started checking on my file and they told me that I hadn't taken the test. So I had to take it. And uh, it was surprising to see like the difference that's existed between that version of me and the version of me that came after my experience in the U.S. Because I had to take another um, another psychological test to start working there at the university. And they, sort, they shared, you know, the results. And they were like kind of surprised because before went, going there, I was more of a follower. And after that, I became more of a me, you know, like a, sort of like an entertaining kind of dude sort of thing. So, yeah. Brazil, it's great sometimes to take the time to do these sort of tests because you get to know you better. You get to um, analyze, you know, the kind of person that you are. And uh, that helps a lot when it comes to, um, well, to seeing where you're going and the things that you have achieved in, in a specific period of time. But anyway, right now we're going to talk a little bit about exploring possibilities and how some of these verbs are going to line up with some of these nouns. In English, I don't know if you guys knew that, but there are some words that do not work together. There are words that normally work best when they are joined with other specific words. For example, the verb analyze. Um, analyze alternatives doesn't necessarily sound as the best thing you can say, but Analyzing information, that is something that will sound much better, you know. And then, so if you say, if you want to analyze a mistake, what would you do while analyzing a mistake? Basically, looking at the things that have happened and why they could have happened. So analyzing something like that basically works as, you know, uh, paying attention to the details of the mistake. How about analyzing a problem? When you analyze a problem, what you do is that you look at the details. You look at um, what can go wrong or what did go wrong and what could be the possible solutions for this problem. How about when you analyze a situation where analyzing a situation is very similar to analyzing a problem. Uh, however, a situation can include more things around it because analyzing a situation has to consider the aftermath of uh, uh, you know the, the things that are happening analyzing a solution once again when you analyze a solution well you are going to try to um, think of the detail think of what you're supposed to do or what are the um, actions that you feel like you are supposed to do but at the same time, you should consider that this solution may have other ramifications that can also turn into problematic situations. So when you analyze a solution, you need to pay attention to those, to those possibilities as well. Then we have, um, as I said, for these other two, we're not going to necessarily use analyze. And for analyzing information, well, analyzing information basically means Gathering the info that you have, paying attention to the details, to the facts, to the um, you know, the 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 the, the situation that you are um studying, and of course focusing on the important parts of that information. Then we have explore. Explore is going to be a word that it's very, very weird that you can use it with a mistake, because exploring a mistake. Sorry, exploring a mistake is not necessarily, um, you know, something that, that we do. Now, exploring a problem can happen. Yes, it's possible that you can explore a problem, but it's not something that you will do a lot. However, exploring a situation or a solution, it is more um, convenient. So exploring a situation. What happens when you explore a situation? Well, you simply finish the class because we're going to talk about that tomorrow. <laughs> so yeah, um, for now, basically that's all the time that we had. Now it's 
uh, great to have heard from you guys today. Um, it's it's sad for those you know who had the um the issue with Zoom. Hopefully tomorrow we're not gonna have any of those problems. It's kind of sad for the teachers. Some teachers um they kind of lost twenty minutes um uh, because of that situation. Now they have to you know do uh twenty extra minutes in class. Uh, in our case, we're basically done here. So yeah, thank you guys very much for uh for tonight. And I hope you have an amazing rest of the night. I hope I'll also see you tomorrow. And uh, yeah, bye-bye and see ya. Bye. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.